Today we are ranking the most unusual borders in the world. Basically, I'll rank them from 1 to 10. 10 is the most unusual, 1 is the least unusual. For example, I know in Belgium and Netherlands they have a lot of enclaves and exclaves. So basically, if you're riding, you're like, I'm in the Netherlands, Belgium, Netherlands, Belgium, Netherlands, Belgium. I want to see such a border where the two countries swap each other constantly let's see if that's actually the case i have no idea let's start with the first unusual border and that's the border diome islands between us and russia why the diome islands are supposed to be unusual is because the date line between them let me see so let's figure out the situation before i rank it how unusual it is we have the world map, this is Russia, this is the Alaska, US, and you have the Diome, Diome, Diomede Islands, all right, my mistake, Diomede Islands. So basically, what's the unusual part of them is that they're two kilometers away from each other, but they have a whole dateline difference, meaning basically the difference is one day between the two islands and for example here it's a totally different day in the one island it can be 24th of june and in the other island can be 25th of june which is very unusual how unusual should i rate this border i would say it's very unusual so let me write them diomede islands between russia and US and I would say their unusualness is let's start with something in the middle because I want to be able to raise the bar even more yeah that's unusual because of the time difference I would say probably let's say seven it's high enough let's move on to the next unusual border is the Belgium and the Netherlands yes the thing that I wanted uh, is happening I was saying they have a lot of enclaves and exclaves and yes that's the case let's check out the border it's called Barle Hertog let's see wow that's very unusual yes 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 look at that look at these enclaves and exclaves okay let me move away the map so I can have the bigger picture of what is where because I cannot figure it out so far. I kind of lost the border. Where is the border? Okay, so basically this is the Netherlands. That's Belgium. And this is the line. But this is the Netherlands as well. And that's, that's Netherlands in Belgium. That's Belgium in the Netherlands. And so on and so on. It's so confusing. I would say that this is more unusual than the previous one. Because the previous border wasn't actually unusual it was the time difference yes that makes it unusual but look at that look at that see that's the belgium in the netherlands and i wonder how does that work i mean see who owns this thing and see it contradicts with the street because the border between the countries passes through private property let me see the private property see what basically if you own this house for example when you're in the kitchen you can be in belgium and in the living room you can be in the netherlands i'm not sure if something can top that i mean look at that and you have belgium inside of that i mean this is more than the vatican city and that's belgium yeah for example this house uh is full in belgium this is also full in belgium this is full in the Netherlands. This park is fully in Belgium. Congratulations. You're fully in one country. And you are in the exclaves and enclaves area. All right. So what are we thinking about this one? I think I should give it very high score. But uh, at the same time, let me type. It's uh, Belgium and uh, Netherlands. What are we thinking? At the same time, I always want to have more room for a higher score, but this is so unusual. I feel like the most unusual borders popped up in the beginning and I need to give the high 
score, but I'm not sure if something even more unusual is going to come up in the future. But uh, what are we thinking? I'll say nine. I would say nine. I would say it's extremely unusual. Let's move on to the next one. Tumen River. All right. It's between China, North Korea and Russia. And uh, what's the unusual part of it? Because the three countries, they all meet in the Tumen River, which makes unusual geographical situation. Uh, based on the description that I checked, I'm not fully sure about the, what's so unusual about it. So let's go right to it and see what's up with the Tumen River. All right, that's the Tumen River. So we have North Korea, China and Russia. Basically, let me do the non-satellite map because I can see the borders better and I can see, I can also see the countries better. We have uh, China, North Korea and Russia. And let's see where is the point they meet and why is that so unusual? What's up with it? All right, that's Russia. That's North Korea. No, that's China, North Korea and Russia. And they all meet somewhere here. All right, all right, I can see it. Yes, I can see it. They all meet here. Let me go back to the satellite and let me see what's so unusual about it. All right, let's see. You have the Korea Russia Friendship House. You have the bridge. That's the Tumen River. And all the three countries' borders meet here. What are we thinking? I don't think that's so unusual, actually. I mean, basically, their borders are in the river. See, you have China, Russia and North Korea. I assume that's North Korea in Korean. Uh, OK, OK. What are we thinking here? Actually, I'll give it a not high score because this doesn't sound unusual. I don't know why that's in the list. It's basically three countries that meet on a river. Yeah, maybe because they are three, maybe because they meet on a river, but come on, uh, the other ones were us. I'm typing North North. One second, North Korea. And we have the China. And what score should we give to them? So far, the Belgium Netherlands is the most unusual border. I feel like nothing can top that even after checking the Tumen River, which wasn't that unusual. I'm more confident how unusual the Belgium Netherlands border is. So what are we thinking? I would say, actually I would say two. It wasn't unusual at all. All right, we have the next one. Please impress me. I want to be impressed with this border in terms of how unusual it is. I don't know how a border can impress you otherwise, unless it's unusual border. Because usually borders, uh, they're not supposed to be some architectural masterpiece or anything. They're more like a practical way to move through countries. It's not like a parliament or something. But yeah, let's see the Mount Everest. It says Mount Everest between China and Nepal. All right, let's see what China and Nepal is going to offer me. I imagine the weirdness of the border is going to come from the fact that it's a mountain and the border should be unusual. OK, China, Nepal, that's the border so far. I don't see anything unusual. Maybe. Yeah, the border is. See where the peak of the mountain actually not. The border is not on the peak of the mountain. So basically, Nepal owns this land after the peak. They didn't separate it exactly on the peak of the mountain or maybe that's not a peak but see it looks like a peak it looks like the peak of the mountain i see a line and yeah what's so unusual about it so far i cannot see how the nepal and china border is so unusual that's the whole mount everest maybe it's in a certain section of it but i cannot see Maybe that's the border. Oh, maybe the border is on the Mount Everest. Yes. On a peak of the mountain, there is a border. But I mean, do you mean like, ah, yeah, that's the Mount Everest itself. 
and there is a border. All right, so my speculation is maybe that's the highest border because it's Mount Everest and there is a border there. I didn't know actually the China is next to Mount Everest. I always thought uh, Mount Everest is somewhere in Nepal and it's not close to any other place. Basically, if Mount Everest was slightly towards this side, let's say a few kilometers north, it would have been in China. <laughs> but it's in Nepal because it's here. It's so close to the border. And everyone otherwise would associate Mount Everest with China. But we associate it with Nepal. It's down the border. And uh, how unusual is that, actually? Actually, I'll give it credits because it's potentially the highest border. It's on Mount Everest and the border is slightly to the north. And I would say, but at the same time, I think you cannot top the Belgium Netherlands where one person's kitchen is in the Netherlands and his living room is in Belgium. Let me type Nepal and China. I would say five. Yes, I still think the Russia-US border is more unusual because of the time thing. Imagine you can see the other island and on the calendar they are living in yesterday. <laughs> Moving on with the next one. Let's see. We got the Derby line, which is between US and Canada. All right, let's see the Derby line. Let's see what the Derby line has to offer to us. I think US and Canada, they have uh, the unusualness in their borders is how you have the Alaska and the rest of US and Canada is kind of in between. So that's a bit uh, interesting geography. Derby line. All right. Where is that located? Actually, let me see. I can see it's in the middle of it. Oh, no, it's actually in the east coast kind of area. Right. So what's so unusual about the Derby line? All right, let me zoom in again. I want to see what's the unusualness of the Derby line. As we can see, it's kind of a small piece of land. And I feel like that's the Netherlands, Belgium situation, where basically that's Canada, I think. From what I can see, it's not uh, 360 degrees surrounded by the US. So basically, oh no, actually, look at that. Look at that. See this tiny piece of land here between these two lines. That's US and Canada. What? All right. All right. So I'm getting these Netherlands, uh, Belgium vibes. But here it's one chunk. In the Netherlands, Belgium, you had a lot of exclaves and enclaves. And here it's only one. And it creates this weird line. If this was Canada here, then it wouldn't be unusual. The US is having this narrow land here. What about here? I feel like this is some touching point. Does that mean you're not leaving Canada if you come from here to here? See, because that's US, that's US. And if these two lands are Canada, they're kind of touching basically through here you're not leaving Canada, but it's kind of a unusual spot. It's like a very, very tiny spot. All right, let me see if uh, the border passes through apartments, houses or anything like that. That was the case in Belgium and the Netherlands. Is that going to be the case here? It's possible that they managed it so it doesn't pass, which will decrease the unusualness because if it passes through house it's more unusual for me it's extremely unusual how your kitchen and the living room can be in different countries does that mean somebody can build a house here between the two countries but i imagine a lot of paperwork sounds like i feel like in the netherlands belgium case the houses were already built and eventually some borders appeared afterwards but i don't know about it let me see here so far it doesn't pass this through a house it passes. Oh, yeah, there we go. It passes through this one. All right. All right. All right. So it's unusual as well, but I think I'll give it not as high score as the Netherlands Belgium because it's only one chunk of land uh, on the other country's territory. 
in the Netherlands and Belgium, you have a lot of enclaves and exclaves. And because it's a smaller scale, all right, should they give it the same as the Umeda Islands in Russia and US where they have a different time zone? All right, I'll actually give it a six. We have as the next one, I don't know how to spell that, Livia. All right, it's between France and Spain. So let's see what France and Spain can offer us. What I know about the border between Spain and France is that Andorra is somewhere there and that's like a small tiny nation in Europe. Actually, I'm interested to go to Andorra. If anyone has been to Andorra or watches me from Andorra, tell me down in the comments and tell me, is it a cool place to visit? I associate it with a ski resort destination and it's kind of a cute i've always been fascinated by small countries yeah and tell me if i should go there let me do the other style of map because i got confused too many borders all right all right all right oh yeah that's andorra right here i can zoom out a bit that's france that's spain and we're zooming in by the way spain won the Euro Cup yesterday and congratulations to Spain about that. Uh, they played really well and I feel like it was well-deserved win. So basically this small land is Spain and it's France again if you zoom in. Let me see. I'm pressing on the hotel and I want to see is it going to tell me that's a hotel in France or hotel in Spain? Oh, it doesn't tell me anything. But yeah, I think that's the idea all right i feel like that's not the case but the unusual part is that this small land of spain is surrounded by france so i would say uh, it's not that unusual i feel like it's that this is like the derby line it's a similar case i didn't check if it passes through houses but i think it doesn't so yeah i feel like it doesn't pass us through houses or apartments so the canada us the derby line it was more unusual because i saw it passed through a house as we can see see the border passes through only like uh, fields and the actual city itself with the houses and anything it's in the middle of the whole thing you have france and you have spain inside of france and inside of that Spain, there are some houses and properties. From what I checked, the border is passing through fields around Spain in France. What score should we give to that? I think that's uh, less unusual than US Canada, maybe, maybe five. The same as Mount Everest, China, Nepal. I'll give it that type of score. Let's see the next one. Bir Tawil. It's between Egypt and Sudan. What's so unusual about it? It says that uh, there is a land that none of these countries claim. So I want to see that. It's a border that uh, nobody claimed. Why nobody claimed that land? I mean, don't they want it? All right. I think I can see it already. See, this thing is Egypt on the top and that's Sudan on the south. And you have this border complicated border situation and nobody claims that yeah that's unusual to me so does that mean somebody can create his own country here why nobody claimed that actually yeah i'm not sure if this is correct that i see but uh, i type the border and i see this thing so i'm assuming this is the land that nobody claimed there are cities here halayeb marsa shab uh, bir al hasa if you live in this you're in no country. Is that the case? If you know anything about the Sudan and Egypt border, let me know in the comments. I want to know. All right. So what are we thinking about this unusual border between Egypt and Sudan? What should we do with this case? We got Egypt and Sudan with the land that nobody claims. So what are we thinking? All right, I'm seeing a typo here, Russia with I, and uh, Egypt and Sudan, what are we thinking? Nobody claims it, what's so unusual about it? I'll say four. It's unusual, but it's not that unusual. So this was the last border comparison between countries, and I would say the verdict is that Belgium and Netherlands, they have the most unusual border with the enclaves and exclaves, 
the living room and the bedroom can be in different countries. And I don't know how you pay taxes and are you citizen of both because your apartment is situated in both or you can choose where you belong or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you can tell me in the comments what's the situation, but that's definitely the most unusual border according to what I saw. And that's my final opinion. I believe that's the most unusual. The least unusual was Tumen River between Russia, North Korea and China because uh, I feel like that's just three countries crossing each other on a river. Maybe there is something that they missed that makes it unusual. But yeah, Belgium, Netherlands, the most unusual border. Thank you for watching the video and I'm going to see you in the next one.